Jesus is doing. It's a great night just to celebrate together. We're just going to have fun tonight. We're just going to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Just going to have, uh, just going to have a real good time. So, man, just just tune your heart into what God wants to do tonight. We're just going to see what. Uh, you never know what the Holy Spirit's going to do in the middle of a service. So I'm excited about it. I feel really, really good. Stand with me. Let's just pray. We'll jump right into this thing. Got a whole bunch of things going on, and folks uh, just excited about being together. So let's just let's just go after God radically. Let's get real radical in our worship and just go after the Spirit of the Lord and just jump in. And Man, it's a good time to jump in the river, okay? Father, we're just going to say thank you. What an amazing time we have to come together tonight. We're excited about being in your presence. It's great to be, Lord, together with the saints, and we just come together to just celebrate what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for your presence and the promise of it. We thank you, God, for this opportunity we have of just sharing together in the joy of the Lord. I pray, God, that even tonight, Lord, we would just be overwhelmed by the goodness of your love. We'd be overwhelmed by your grace and your spirit and your mercies. And, God, we just invite you, come and just tabernacle among us, that the men and women of God together tonight, Lord, would just be able to say, surely we have been with the Lord. It's an exciting time, God, as we just come to together and we lift your name we're going to praise you we're going to get radical in our praise because lord we have a reason to be radical you're a good god and we love you we just celebrate your goodness together so jesus you take charge we just invite you let your presence be manifested in the house we just welcome the presence of the father the presence of the son the presence of holy spirit and we thank you god for just meeting us here as we celebrate together in jesus name and everybody said amen amen, amen. let's worship the lord come on
down my life I'm giving up control Never looking back I surrender all I'm living for your glory on the earth Sing that again I'm laying down my life I'm giving up control Never looking back I surrender all I'm living for your glory on the earth Passion in my heart This passion in my heart This man I'm never looking back.
Oh 
your gift of life I'm in that place once again I'm in that place once again sing it all everybody Jesus Christ I think upon your sacrifice you became nothing poured out to death your gift of life up in that place once again up in that place once again once again I look upon the cross where you Exalted to the highest place, King of the 
cross where you died humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside once again I thank you once again I pour out my Once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, Lord.
shout. Yeah, we got a reason to shout to the Lord. Amen. Hey, got, wow. Anybody else got a reason? Because it feels right, man. I mean, when you stop and you consider all the, you just, you just think of the blessings and, and just the privilege of just walking in sonship and, and partnering with heaven and what heaven's doing on the earth. It's an exciting time. You can't help but get excited about it. Feels really, really good. Amen. Well, listen, man, we're, we're just going to continue in the spirit of worship and, and praise and just continue just honoring God. We're blessed tonight. Mike, Mike's with us. Mike Warnke's with us this evening. He's going to be bringing an amazing word in just a little while. And, and I'm excited. Uh, we've been friends for a little while. We kind of met on a strange way. It was kind of neat. We were talking about some of that today and just uh, reminiscing over a bunch of old times. But I thank the Lord for what God's doing in the body of Christ. It's an amazing, it's an amazing season right now. And As we stop and consider, man, what's this thing look like to you? What do you think that's... You stop and think of all the things that are going on around us and all the things that are happening. And, and we've been talking a lot about that even in Financial Freedom Month here at the church and the world's economy and how things are being shaken and so many things that are happening. And here we are living in maybe maybe what might be absolutely the most exciting time since the history of the church. And it's a great, great time. And we have this opportunity of partnering together with people all over the land. And, and I just think it's a great time that we have to really, if, if, as, even as we're singing this song, shout to the Lord. That we have a reason to shout. That we have a, we have a reason to lift up our voice and to give him praise. So tonight we're just going to continue just, just in praise and worship just as a way of honoring God. We're going to receive our tithes and our offerings tonight. And if you need an envelope, we have envelopes that are available for anybody that might need an envelope. Uh, man, we want to just make that opportunity available to anybody. But we're just going just gonna to give unto the Lord tonight. And just, if you guys will prepare the altar, let's just pray into that. Father, we thank you. What a blessing and a privilege and an opportunity we have of just coming together to be able, Lord, in this hour to honor you, to worship you and all that you're doing around us. We thank you, God, for the privilege we have to stand with you as sons and daughters in this land. And we're excited, Lord, about this opportunity to just let our light shine before men that they might see the good works we do and then glorify our Father, which is in heaven. It's what you've called us to. And in this moment, God, we just thank you that we have the privilege of just sowing, sowing into your kingdom. Lord, I thank you. We're investing in a harvest and you're doing amazing things around us. And we thank you, God, that we get to partner with heaven and all that heaven's doing on the land. And so, Father, we just ask your blessing upon the gift and the giver tonight as we bring our tithes and we bring our offering. We do it as a place of honoring and worshiping you, God. And we thank you. What a privilege. What an opportunity as we share together in this hour. So we say thank you, Lord. We love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Here's what we're going to do. Stand with me one more time. We're going to bring our tithes and our offering. And as they play, if you'll just... Uh, Bring your tithes, your offerings forward, and then just hug on a bunch of folks and just welcome one another. Let the love of Jesus just flow in the house. Amen. Bless the Lord.
Wow, bless the Lord. It is that good, isn't it? Amen. The, uh, Bill, help me out and bring that across, would you? Yeah, thanks, man. No problem. Everybody good? Doing all right? Excellent. How many know it's an exciting time? Oh man, like I've had more excitement at come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I thought it was better than that. Come on, man. It does. It feels good. It's a great time. It's an exciting time in the body of Christ. This is an incredible moment, and we have this opportunity to really make a difference, make an impact. I was uh, I was actually reading something I thought was pretty cool. I shared it uh, a couple of weeks ago in the mentoring class, but um, it talks about it talks about a place where we can walk and be. And in the King James, the word was in sample, and it was E-N-S-A-M-P-L-E. And I, I used to think that that was just a King James word for example, but it's actually so much more. In the Greek, the word picture to it, it's like if you took a quarter and you put it on a piece of soft pine wood and hit it with a hammer, when you pull the quarter away, it leaves a big impression. That's what he was saying. This is our opportunity to make an impression everywhere that we go, a lasting impression. Isn't it amazing that we have an opportunity to, to meet people that we, we may only meet them briefly at a restaurant. We may only meet them briefly at, at a grocery store or wherever it might be. It seems like preachers always talk about food. But anyway, <laughs> okay, but, but anyway, in those, in those two of my favorite places, okay, uh, but you, you get to meet people in there. You make an impression that will last. Why is that? Because you're carrying something the world's hungry for. You're carrying something the world desires. You're carrying something that everybody needs. They might not know it's what they need, but it's what everybody needs. And I'll tell you something, when we carry him well, they'll desire him. Do you understand what I just said? Yeah. If we carry him well, you'll make him hungry. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. I've had people tell me, well, you know, I've been working on my family, but they just won't come, and I don't know what to do. And they say, well, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. I said, no, but you can put salt in their oats. Because if you put salt in their oats, they'll go looking for a drink. How do you put salt in their oats? Carry them well. Carry them well and make them hungry for what you have. This is a great moment to be letting your light shine, carrying Jesus well. Make the world around you hungry. Make them jealous for what you have. Man, I want what you got. Because this is that hour that we're living in. It's a fine hour. It's an exciting time. This is a guy that's excited about Jesus. I happen to know that because we've spent a lot of time talking about Jesus. And I've found out something. He likes Jesus. <laughs> it's a pretty good day. I can tell you that Mike Warnke is in love with a man. <laughs> and, it's a, and it's a good day. <laughs> and it's a good day. Come on. And, and you know what? It's a good day for that. And I'm excited about this. So it's with privilege that I can tell you, man, this is a guy. We, we've kind of bonded several years back. We, we spent time together on the phone. We spent time together in person. He was up here last year in Snowtober. Some of you remember Snowtober. You know what I mean? When it snowed at the end of October. And uh, I told him, now, if he comes this weekend and we get another snowstorm, that's my sign. I ain't never having him again. But, <laughs> but it didn't snow. We're in. We're good. And it's a pleasure of mine to introduce this man to you. He has been used mighty of the Lord over the years. Uh, God has, uh, has helped him to help so many hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people find Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. I'm pretty excited about that. Would you make Mike Warnke welcome in the house here tonight? Come on. Thanks. Well, whoa. You got to, I'm going to work from down here, so you might want to just haul back on it just a, a little bit. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. I used to tease uh, sound people a lot, but then I realized they have the power. So no more teasing the sound dudes or dudettes, as the case may be. Anyway, thank you, boss. Okay. Appreciate that. Stay on the brown. Boy, that sounds like a song. Does it? Just stay on the brown. Hallelujah. Uh, first of all, you may have noticed I was sitting down during praise and worship, and I want to say to the worship team, that had nothing to do with you guys. Um, actually, uh, worship to me is the whole reason we do this. I mean, I think the reason we come to church is for praise and worship. P.S. We get a message. And the reason I think that is because when you study uh, David and you see when he 
uh, liberated Jerusalem from the Jebusites and established his, his capital there, the first thing he does is to establish tabernacle worship. And in doing so, he doesn't start a 24-hour day uh, prophetic conferences. He doesn't start 24-hour day evangelistic preaching. He doesn't start 24-hour day Bible studies or prayer services or soaking tents or anything else. What he does is he establishes 24-hour day praise and worship. Why? Well, because David wanted the presence of God in his city. Now, the Lord hears us when we pray. He helps us when we read the word. He inspires us when we preach the gospel. He, he, he anoints us when we sing the praises of God. But that's what he inhabits, the praises of the Lord. So if you want God to be inhabiting your services, inhabiting your church, it'll be because you put the proper emphasis on praise and worship. Because that's where the Lord lives. All the other stuff is good, but his abode is the praise and the worship of his people. Because he lives in our hearts. And real praise and worship, that's where it's supposed to come from. It's not supposed to come from the hymnal. It's not supposed to come from the wall. It's not supposed to just come from your mouth. It's supposed to come from your heart. Amen? The Lord says, write his word on your heart, and then you won't sin against it. Why? Because that is the depth of you. And when things come from the depth of you, they're real. Yeah? And God wants it to be real. God wants it to be manifested. Uh, God wants it to be meaningful. God wants it to be salt in the oats. That's a very, very good analogy, and I understand that that particular reference to it is your notice that I'm stealing it. So, uh, you know, uh, it was very cool. You can't, you can't take, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And then pastor says, yeah, but you can put salt in their oats. Amen? That's a, that's a good line. How do you get salt in their oats? Well, who's the salt of the earth? We are. So, what does that mean? Well, that means we need to climb into their oats. What does that mean? That means that we've got to be willing to take part in their life. We've got to be willing to crawl into their story. We've got to have some respect for where they are and make their life and their, and their, their living something that, that, that is, is, is a place of craving for the Lord. We do that. You know, don't wait for somebody else to do that. Don't wait for some TV evangelist to do that. Don't do that. If you're going to put out a salt lick, go put out a salt lick. Amen? Don't expect one to fall from the sky. It, it's up to you dudes, right? Amen. You know, if you ask a Catholic that knows their doctrine, if you say to them, are you saved? The Catholic will say, I'm saved. I'm being saved. I will be saved. Okay? Now, uh, if you ask a Catholic if they're saved, and they say, I don't know, you'll have to ask the priest. They don't know their doctrine, okay? And there are a lot of people that don't know their doctrine, not just Catholics. You know, you say some Pentecostals, why do we do it that way? I don't know, we've always done it that way, amen? Uh, well, how come we do it that way? I don't know, I was raised doing it that way. Well, how come we do it that way? I don't know, that's what the pastor told me, so that's, how, that's why I do it. There's a whole lot of people that are just doing stuff because they're doing stuff. And they have no idea why they're doing that stuff. Amen? Amen? No idea whatsoever. But if they know what is really their doctrine, they'll say, I'm saved, I'm being saved, and I will be saved. Now we as Protestants say, now wait a minute. I'm saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And, and it's once and for all. So maybe I don't believe that other thing that you say. Well, let's think about it. We are saved. means we, we acknowledge Jesus as Savior and Lord. We say yes to him. Make this decision to walk in his ways. Okay? I'm being saved. What does that mean? It means that I'm walking out my salvation with fear and trembling. I am, I am walking out a course called sanctification what does that mean that means 
that every day in every way, the best of my ability, I get to be a little bit more like Jesus. Amen? So I'm being saved. I'm being transformed. I'm being changed. I'm walking in my new life. Woohoo! Yeah, amen, you know? And then I will be saved. What does that mean? It means we're coming to a place where we're going to cast off the skin envelope and take off. Amen? And at that point, we're going to become what we really are. Amen? Hallelujah. Did you hear what I just said? We're going to become what we really are. Woohoo! That's good stuff right there. If you're not writing it down, you're missing it. Okay? So we're saved. We're being saved. We will be saved. Amen? Yahoo! That's good stuff. You have to excuse me. I get excited. I start shouting. Unfortunately, though, my shout comes out. Woohoo! Uh, apparently, I have the Tigger anointing. You know? Most wonderful thing about tiggers is tiggers is wonderful things. Their heads are made out of rubber. Their bottoms are made out of springs. They're rouncy, trouncy, roly-poly, fun, 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 fun. Most wonderful thing about tiggers is I'm the only one. Woohoo! Amen? <laughs> which is way better than the Eeyore anointing, which is what a lot of Christians have. Oh, no, it's not for me. Praise God. I'll just stand over here in the corner till Jesus comes. No, don't bless me. Bless Piglet. Bless Owl. Bless Pooh. Pooh, really? Pooh, really? Really? I have 16 grandchildren. I know what Pooh is. And I don't think if they made a bear out of it, I'd want to play with it. That's just me. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? So, so what we got to do, we, we are left here because God trusts us to carry the salt. Now, wouldn't it be better if the night you get saved, everybody you love could just come to the altar with you and everybody could close their eyes, open their eyes, and they'd be in heaven. Amen? Well, I mean, if I had gone to heaven the night I got saved, there is a whole lot of stuff I would not have to have gone through. I'm thinking of just one thing, hemorrhoids. I would have never gone there. How can you say that in church? It's in the Bible, dude. Only the ones in there are golden ones. <laughs> and I got to say, that's, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's not my train car right there, okay? You understand what I'm talking about here, though? I, I wouldn't have uh, had uh, open heart surgery. Uh, I wouldn't have arthritis that's twisting my my hands and feet out of out of whack. I wouldn't have, you know, I would have made some of the mistakes I made. I wouldn't have gone through some of the stuff I went through. If on the night I got the saved, I had just gone to heaven. Now, if the Lord really loves me, it seems to me that that would be the way it's done. You get yourself right. You don't have time to backslide. You don't have time to screw it up. You just go to heaven. Amen? That would be great. But he leaves me here. Why does he leave me here? Well, there's got to be a reason. Because if there isn't, it just means God wants to watch me twist in the wind. And if that's the truth, then I've got a God that would get a kick out of pulling the wings off a butterfly. Just to watch it flop around. Amen? I can't worship a thing like that. Hello? You with me here? Somebody say, a, say, somebody say a amen up here in this house. Amen? I mean, praise God, you guys are like a bunch of frozen Presbyterians. It's, I realize it's cold, and any Presbyterians, um, pray God. Anyway, so, uh, uh, I think I just got in trouble with that. Anyway, uh, but see, you know, the thing is, I don't have a God that pulls the wings off of butterflies. I have a God that puts the wings on butterflies, amen? And, and he uses all the colors, and he shines all the lights, and, and, and it's a glorious thing to watch this creation flitter through the air and spread color and joy and happiness every place. That's the God I serve. Amen? So there's a reason for me to be here. And I'll tell you what it is. People are watching. People are watching. People are watching. You don't have to run them down. People are watching. You don't have to go cruising, trying to find some place where you can get another notch on your Schofield. People are watching. And they're not interested in what you have to say. They're interested in how you are. They're not expecting you to have a life devoid of problems. But when you go through a problem, they want to see how you handle it. They want to see if you have, if you have any salt in your oats before they're going to allow you to put any salt in their oats. Hello, you with me? 
Okay, now I'm telling you, a lighthouse doesn't run around all over an island trying to find a boat to rescue, does it? Uh, a lighthouse just stands there and shines its light, amen? And the boats that need it see it. Hello, amen? And they're saved. You get it? You get it. All right. Praise the Lord. So we have this responsibility. We've been left here to be a witness. We've been left here to show that having Jesus is worth having and being a Christian is worth being. Not by being perfect, not by keeping all the rules and regulations, not by wearing the uniform, not by learning, you know, uh, how to fit in and how to make everybody pleased with you, but just we've been, we've been left here so that we can walk a walk that is luminous with the presence of God and powerful with the presence of the Holy Spirit and filled with, now listen to me, filled with love because that's the definition of the thing that we're supposed to be walking in, the definition of the thing that we worship, the definition of he who is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, fairest of 10,000, lily of the valley, bright and morning star, he was called wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Amen. And it all turns out to be the biggest Valentine anybody ever got. Hello? So if you got two, you need to pack that at the door, okay? If you got arrogance, you need to pack that at the door. If you're stomping around like you're the biggest, baddest bull in the neighborhood, you need to get over that, amen? You're not here to tell other people what to do. You're here to tell them what Jesus has already done. You know, let me say that again, okay? You're not here to tell other people what to do. You're here to tell them what Jesus has already done. Amen? Jesus did it all. You know? What, what, what was it, what's that old song? Jesus gave it all. Paid it all. All unto him I owe. Yeah. My sins were dark as scarlet, but he washed them white as snow. Hallelujah. Woohoo! It's close. Anyway, praise God. I know all the words to yell submarine. <laughs> we all live in a yellow submarine. A yellow submarine. A yellow submarine. You know what's frightening is you guys didn't sing the other song with me. It's just, it scares me at a point. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So anyway. Praise and worship. See, I got off there on that rabbit trail. You thought I was not going to be able to find my way back. Because you're looking at me, you're saying he's an old guy. And old guys are just forgetful. Uh, you gray heads, you mind if I blow our cover? We're not forgetful. We just don't want to do what you say. <laughs> and it's just easier to say I forgot than argue with a bunch of people that haven't got a clue. Amen. <laughs> Doggone, man. You know. Back when I was in my 20s, I knew everything there was to know. And now that I'm not 20 anymore, way not 20 more, I mean way, way, way not 20 anymore, I realize I don't know squat, and it's okay. It's okay because I've got a God that knows everything, and as long as I hear his voice and I'm obedient to his word, I am going to be cool, and I am going to carry the salt for the oats. Hello. Woo, hallelujah. I'm, 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 you should have never said that to me. You freaked me right on out, okay? <laughs> so what, what happens is during praise and worship, though, for me, the atmosphere gets very thin. You know that Crowder song where heaven and earth meet with a big sloppy kiss? Yeah. To me, that's what happens during praise and worship. And so I sit and wait to be right where the, the lips meet. I want to be in the center of the kiss. Yeah, yeah, and I would, ha, you know. Then the Lord talks to me. Then, and God has given me a gift that I'm, that I'm trying to. I'm calling it a prophetic exhortation. In other words, He gives me the words I need prophetically to lift you up, to 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 exhort you to higher places and to and to better lives and to greater witness. Woohoo! I mean, you know, I, I believe that the real need in the world today is for people to see that there are folks that are still committed to the love of God and believe with all their hearts that people can rise above the lowest common denominator. 
That's the thing I have with the world that bothers me the most. It's just a world where we'll do whatever we have to do to get by, but we're not really going to strive for excellence because everything is just good enough for government work. Amen? No, no, no. We, 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 hallelujah. I mean, we got a God that can, whoo. Anyway, so I'm down here, and so I call that prophet, prophetic exhortation. So that tonight I was sitting there, um, you know, I, I started to stand up uh, because I didn't really feel like I was getting anything. I was really enjoying the praise and worship. And, I, you know, it's one of the, you know, these guys got a good spirit, okay? And you can tell a lot of ch about a church by the spirit of the praise and worship band, okay? First of all, I didn't feel any, any aggravation coming from the platform. When, when there are issues amongst the people doing praise and worship, you can tell. You may not be able to put words to it or tell anybody else what it is, but you can tell when there's strife on the platform. Not a good thing, okay? Not a good thing. Well, I didn't feel that tonight. Now, I don't know all of this stuff. Okay? So, you know, it was good, man. I was feeling it, you know, and had a nice beat to it. I like something that's a little, you know. I hate to sing songs that make me feel like I'm at a funeral, unless I'm at a funeral, okay? <laughs> You know, we don't want to do jump, jump at somebody's funeral. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it just, it's just in poor taste. Not that it wouldn't be a good song, especially for a Christian. Because, you know, I mean, I used to go out in the backyard and jump, jump all the time. And people would say, what are you doing? i go, rapture practice, man. I'm hoping God catches me on the up, you know. <laughs> you know, I always used to say, and I also want to be next to two people that don't know Jesus. And when I feel myself leave the ground, I'm going to grab them boys, okay? And we're going to whiz through the clouds. And I'm going to pull them around in front of me and go, okay, you guys want to get saved or shall I just let go? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a 100% response to that altar call. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but I like that music that, you know, it puts me in the mood, you know? And it was very good, very good. And so I was just about to stand up. And, and kind of get with the program, you know, and show you guys that, you know, for a fat old guy, I still got a little wiggle in me, amen? I mean, I'm saved, I'm not dead. Anyway, so anyway, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, pardon me. <coughs> oh, goodness gracious, that's not good. And the Lord, um, and the Lord just tapped me on the shoulder and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I sat right back down again, and God started talking to me. First of all, he uh, talked to me about the praise and worship team, and he said, uh, I like the spirit and the context uh, of the praise and worship team tonight, the spirit and the context. And so the spirit of it was the anointing, but the context was what they were saying. And they sang songs about, they sang songs about fire, freedom, and thanksgiving. Fire, freedom, and thanksgiving. Now, that's a pretty good trinity as far as I'm concerned. Old Ma Meister Eckhart, back in the Middle Ages, he was this uh, a theologian from the Middle Ages, and, and, and he said, if the only prayer you ever say is thank you, it'll be enough. Is that not good? Woohoo! You know? We know about fire. We know how we need fire. Fire is life. I mean, I was a survivor. I know these things. Fire is life. Amen? They put out your fire, you're gone. Hallelujah. You know? And if you get voted out first, apparently it's something you need to throw yourself off a building of, about. I don't know. Anyway, so, but fire is life. Human life ceases to exist without fire. Fire can be destructive, but anything in life can be destructive if it's abused, okay? But fire cleans away uh, the dross. Fire takes care of the dead growth and the underbars. Fire burns away the stubble and leaves you with the hay. Fire refines us. Fire is important. Fire in our belly is what gives us the strength to stand up and fight the fights that we're supposed to be fighting. You know, the Lord says, I, I didn't come to really bring you peace. I came to bring you a sword, you know. And we know the peace of God and we believe in the peace of God. And I love the peace that passes understanding. I get that. But there is a time when we need to rise and strike, amen? And without fire in our belly, hey, 
We're not going to be there. We're not going to do that. We're just going to wuss out, wimp out, and we're just going to let the world run all over us. And you know, for all the love I preach, I don't think that that's what love is, and I don't think that's what God meant. Hello? It's dull and dead in here, just poom. You know, what did, I, what did I say? Did I say something bad? Am I? Okay, all right, praise God. Uh, so, uh, that, that was it. <laughs> Bless your heart. You missed it, huh? Well, you know, the older you get. Anyway. So, so you got fire and, 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 and you got, and you got um, Thanksgiving and freedom. The freedom. Listen. Freedom, you're free. It's for freedom that the Lord has set you free. Be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. That's what the word says. It was for freedom that the Lord set you free. So be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Amen. I get that. I get that. You're free, but you're not at liberty. You're free, but you're not at liberty because of that freedom to do anything you want to do. Act any way you want to act. Yes, there's mercy. Yes, there's grace. But there's also justice, too. And without recompense, there is no justice. Amen? And you don't want to be walking on the justice side. What you want to do is you want to be obedient to what God says. And in the midst of your freedom, you want it to be all that it can be. But it can only be that if you allow the person who gave it to you tell you what it really means. Because freedom in the world we live in, thinking about freedom the way that the world thinks about freedom will get you into trouble because they don't know what freedom is. They think license is freedom. They think that ignoring all moral imperatives is freedom. They think doing anything they want to, and if it comes up being a bad thing, all I got to do is legalize it, and it's okay. Amen? All I got to do is pass the law, make it okay, and then it's okay. All right? And I don't want to offend anybody here, but I'm just giving you an example of what I'm talking about. Legalizing same-sex marriage doesn't make it okay. It just makes it legal, and legal is not necessarily okay. Well, we, we're free. We, we're free. We can do that. We're free. No, you're not. You're free, but you're not at liberty to just do anything you want to do. You're not at liberty to just ignore the things of God. Well, I'm not saved by the rules and regulations. No, but I tell you what, the rules and regulations keep you out of the ditch. And you know, the trick of life is stay out of the ditch. Lair. You know? Don't let me get all Medea on you up here. I'll start going, hallelujah. Anyway, so. Anyway, so, you know. You with me? So the context of the praise and worship tonight, I thought that was really good. These are the things that the Lord talked to me about while we were doing praise and worship. And while you guys were singing songs about fire freedom and, and thanksgiving. Then the Lord said, tell them, you have not arrived yet. Press in, press on, rise up. You have not arrived. Press in, press on, rise up. It's not the goal we set. It's the journey that we take. Jesus is not the goal. He's the journey. People used to say, well, Jesus is my co-pilot. Then you're in big trouble. Jesus isn't my co-pilot. He's not my pilot. He's my airplane. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's the journey I'm on. He's everything. He's my all in all. You know? He doesn't take a back seat to nobody. That's my mother-in-law's job. So this is what the Lord is saying. You're not there yet. Don't get comfortable now that you have arrived at a plateau. Because there's another plateau. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. God has more for you, okay? But you can't start saying, Lord, make it easier. You have got to say, Lord, I'm ready for anything. Because 
if you can't, if, if you're going to just say, make it easy, make it easy, make it easy, you can't expect God to, uh, you can't expect God to respect the prayer of more, more, more if, you, if you're talking easy, easy, easy. You know, I just want to sit down here, Lord, you mail it in. Somebody said, oh, I pray all the time. Why, God, why isn't God blessing me? Well, because at your present level of giving, if God blessed you any more, he'd just be creating a, a bigger thief. Ooh, pin drop time. Hallelujah. <laughs> pin drop time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's something else. Anyhow. <laughs> I know you're sitting there and you're saying to yourself, God, that guy's weird. Listen, I've already been helped. You wouldn't have liked me before at all. Trust me. <laughs> you know? You, you, you understand what I'm trying to say here? I'm not banging on anybody. I don't know about your giving and stuff like that. And if I just offended you, it's probably because you're guilty. God is not going to waste a... God's not going to waste a perfectly good healing on you if all you want to do is be comfortable in the Barker Lounge while you're watching football. There's more to it than that, okay? You don't pull over to the side of the road and say, I've arrived. Because it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And no matter what plateau you come to, there's always going to be another plateau. There's always going to be a place to step up. There's always going to be another thing to do. Just, just say amen if you understand what I'm saying. Amen. Okay. Not easier, easier. Rather, higher, higher. If you expect the prayer of more and more to be respected. Not easier, easier. But higher, higher. If you expect the, praise, or the prayer of more and more to be respected. Then the Lord reminded me of that scripture that says, Do not be weary. Do not become weary of well-doing. One of the things that happens to us as congregations, as the community of believers is, we get jaded. I've heard that before. I've heard them songs before. I've heard it all before. Well, let me tell you something. No, you haven't. And if you think you have, it's because you quit singing and you quit listening. Because the Bible is like an onion, folks. Every time you get done with the layer, there's another layer underneath. Amen? And the closer you get to the middle, the more you cry. Hello? <laughs> you with me here? Okay. If, if, if you're afraid of the tears, the only option you have is to sit down and stop peeling. But that ain't on God, because there's more, there's higher, there's better. But if you just want to be comfortable, if you just want to park your RV and fish, you can do that. God's not even going to be mad at you. But you know what? There's going to be people who go to hell because you're not going to get there with the oats in time. See, we bring that all the way back, so you have to keep up with this. You don't think I know where I'm going, but I do. I really don't, but God does, so we're good. Listen to this quote. Journey between what you once were and who you are now becoming is where the dance of life really takes place. Hallelujah. Huh? The, on the journey between what you were and what you're becoming... That's where the real dance of life takes place. Is that not good? You like that? I can do that again. <laughs> Somebody record that. I'm taking that with me everywhere. And say some of these dead churches, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> you know. Are there rules and regulations? Yeah, all of that. And do I want to know all of that? Yeah, I do. But you know what? <laughs> I want to know the dances too, don't you? I want, I want to know what makes you laugh like that. You know, my friend Annie Lamont says that laughter is carbonated holiness. 
Carbonated holiness. Is that not the coolest thing you ever heard? I mean, come on, guys. There are people watching, folks. There are people watching. And if all we're going to do is look bummed out, why don't we just stay home? Don't bother to come to church. Don't put all those stickers on your car, for goodness sake. You know, for gosh, just don't. You know? Listen to this. I think joy and sweetness and affection are our spiritual path. We're here to know God, to love and to serve God, and to be blown away by the beauty and miracle of nature. You, now listen, you just have to get rid of so much baggage to be light enough to dance and to sing and to play. Don't have time to carry grudges and don't have time to cling to the need to be right. I know, you know, if people are watching me and all I'm doing is dragging a dead carcass around, you know, you don't know what I used to be. You don't know what I used to do. All the mistakes I've made, all the things that I've failed at. Oh my. And you're dragging this ugliness and stinky and you got it tied around your neck. You got it. Tie it around your neck like it's a decoration, for goodness sake. The only problem with that sucker is, it's like a parasite. You got to feed it. And it takes all your energy to feed that thing. And it takes all of your time to feed that thing. And you become a perpetual victim. And you walk around going, I know Jesus, praise God, hallelujah. You can tell I'm a Christian because I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't dance, I don't sing, I don't laugh, I don't cuss, I don't read books, I don't watch TV, I don't go to movies. If it looks good, I take it off. If it tastes good, I spit it out. If I'm having fun, I'm going to quit it right now. And just think, if you come with me, you can have all the fun I'm having. Let, let me see your oats. Oh, heck no. Stay away my oats, thank you. You get it? I mean, what? praise the Lord, this is not what I was going to preach. Not, but the Lord, see, I sat down there and said, okay, tell me what you want me to tell him. And, and he did. But Lord, you know, you say, but Lord, you know, I, I, I don't think you even hear, I, I hear this all the time. I tried the Christian thing, but I messed up. And since I've messed up, I'm pretty sure that God doesn't hear me anymore, doesn't hear my prayers anymore. And so, if God's not going to hear my prayers anymore, you know, I'm just not going to expend the effort. You know, because, you know, I just want to be easy, easy. I just want to be calm, calm. I just want to, you know, cruise over into the parking lot, park, and, and wait for the rapture to come. Amen? Notice all the books I bring up. When I grow up, I want to be uh, uh, Gloria Copeland. <laughs> she brings hers to the platform in a wagon, you know. Listen. Grace not only follows the judgment of God, but precedes it. That means God's grace is there before you need it, before you call on it. Grace comes to us before birth and sees us through. Grace is the context in which creation lives and moves and has its being. We dwell in it. We float in it. We are saved by it again and again. And so we can risk and venture and fail and fall because we fall into the arms of a gracious God who always allows us to try again. Now, if that's not a cause to dance, I think I'm missing something. If that's not a cause to sing, I, I must be missing something. 
I am forever suspended in the stars and smoke of the grace of God. And in the stars and smoke of the grace of God, Mary became pregnant with Jesus. I am in the presence of the Most High. And his grace surrounds me from beginning to end. It makes me sing. It makes me dance. It, it gives me salt for my oats. It gives me something that I can live out, that I can show people, and they can look at me, and they can get hungry for what I can just stand there and shine. And the boats will find safe harbor because I'm just letting Jesus do his thing. I'm not using my freedom for license or liberty. My freedom is that I get to do what the Lord asks me to do. And I have the freedom to do it any way he asks me to do it. And if it's not the way you do it, that's fine. You don't owe me anything but to love me, okay? If you want me to respect your story, you're going to need to respect mine. Thank you. Listen, we all have a story. We all work it out on our own. Everybody works out their own salvation with fear and trembling. And the Bible says, I know all. I owe no man anything but to love him. What can I say? I think a lot of you know that my eldest son died three years ago. It would be three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, three years ago. Uh, he's 39 years old. He died of uh, kidney failure and end-stage liver disease. When I heard about it, I was in Scotland, and it took me nearly a week to get to California where he was. And he was in a coma. And the doctor said he would never, never come out of it. So as a family, we made a decision to take him off life support. And of course, they always talk about pulling the plug and, and really, that's not what you do, okay? It, it's a process, you know. So we got to the end. We were about ready to do the very last thing, which was take him off the breathing machine, and he woke up. He wasn't supposed to do that. I think he heard somebody tell him he couldn't do that. And you'd have to know my son to realize you don't tell him he can't do anything because he'll do it just to show you he can't. <laughs> and he came back to us, and he was with us another week, and then he passed away. In one week's time, I had to make the decision to take my child off life support twice. You should never have to make that decision once in your life, but twice in a week. And it's against all the rules. It's not supposed to happen that way. Your kids are not supposed to die first. You know, I'm doing my best to serve the Lord. I'm supposed to be blessed and highly flavored, favored. <laughs> I'm standing in a room by myself with him right after he passed. Everybody was making their way back. I'm standing there with him, and I've, I was madder at God than I've ever been. And I said, really? Really? You mean to tell me I'm going to serve you, man and boy, good and bad, night and day, mountaintop and valley, for 40 years, and my, my reward is a dead son? Pretty much, is that what you're telling me? You know, two weeks before that, we've been in Scotland. Mama Susan, she prayed for a blind lady on a Friday night. The lady was getting her driver's license on Monday morning. It's not like we don't see the power of God. We know the power of God. We see, and my kid's dead. Let me say that again. Dead. People say, passed away, gone to glory. He died. And I said, really, 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 this is, this is it, huh? I, I mean, I was steamed. I was steamed. And the Lord spoke to me. You know, I wasn't hearing voices. I, you know, you know where the Lord speaks to you. And the Lord said, you know, Mike, I'm really sorry this hurt you. I know it does. But 
this isn't about you. This is another person's story. I had that week, and don't you know we had those conversations we needed to have, and don't you know that when he passed, he went right into the arms of his other daddy, and he went to his real home? Don't you know that? I do. Does it make me uh, miss him any less? No, not really. Does it, does it keep me from hurting? No, no, it still hurts. But there is a joy, uh, unspeakable and full of glory, that comes with knowing that the Lord's in charge and that, and that it, it's all about a story that he knows the beginning and the end to. And all I've got to do is just trust him enough to let him be the airplane. <coughs> People say, I don't understand how you can stand up and talk to us about the love of God if that's happened in your life. Well, I guess if I didn't I guess if I didn't believe what I preach, I wouldn't be able to, you know? And I gotta say, it's not been the rules and regulations and the dress code that's got me through. It's been dancing in the dark and singing past the graveyard. Hallelujah. Why do I have that? Well, I have that because it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. I have the joy. I can't explain it. If I could explain it, it wouldn't be God. People say that all the time. Well, that can't be God. I don't, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Really? Wow. Isn't that something? God doesn't make any sense to you. Wow, what a surprise. We all forgot you were in the pantheon. I mean, really? Doesn't it say his ways are not my, your ways? My ways are not your ways. And, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Does it say that? Well, Lord, doesn't that mean that if you can't figure it out, it probably isn't God? And if you can't figure it out, it probably is? Well, but really, you want to worship something that you can figure out? Not me. Something I can figure out, something I can understand, something I can get my head around, that is not going to get me through the death of a child. But I'm telling you what, wrapping my heart around Jesus and dancing with him anyway, dancing with him through the tears, singing the song through the tears, understanding that that's my place because not only do I need it for myself but there are people watching and I'm not the only person that's ever been hurt and I'm not the only person that's ever left let, lost a child and I'm not going to let my son's death be for nothing you get, you get me? press on press in rise up Press on, press in, rise up. Woo. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you one last Bible verse. It just came to my mind. I can't even give you the, the address, but you can find it. It's an Old Testament one. It said, or it says, it didn't say, it didn't used to say, I need to get done. I'm sorry. I need to get done. It says, I would have despaired unless I believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And as long as I believe that, oh, Lordy, can I dance. I had a perfectly good sermon. <laughs> but this is pretty much what the Lord wanted you guys to hear, and I'm not really sure why. But I trust that God knows what he's doing. And I hope that what's been said tonight gives you a little clearer vision and a little lighter load.
That's my prayer. And it gives you this hunger to dance at midnight. Hallelujah. Nothing better than Christians that dance at midnight. Amen? Takes the devil off. Nighttime is supposed to be his place. Now we just take it back. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Well, here's what we're going to do. This is a time on Saturday night for healing. And even though I've run off at the mouth here like a crazy man, like there's no tomorrow, and there is a tomorrow, and I've got to preach in my father's church tomorrow, and my mother is going to be hanging on every word because she's going to want to know what to criticize me for later. <laughs> yeah, now at a point, you're just your mom's boy, period, in the story. When I finally cut my hair off, she says, now you look like a real preacher. Really? What have I done for the last 40 years? Mom. But anyway, there is a tomorrow. But tonight's about healing. And if you really can wrap your heart around what I've been saying, not your head, but if you can really wrap your heart around it, if you can just open up, be vulnerable, and just kind of suck that in, that can give you healing in places that some of you have even forgot you had hurts. And those, those forgotten hurts, they're like shrapnel. You know, I got wounded in Vietnam. I still have shrapnel in me. And every once in a while, a little piece will work its way out and the most unopportune places at the most unopportune time how many of you know that you can bury that hurt you can pack that hurt away you can stick that hurt in the closet but if you don't deal with that hurt at the most inopportune time in the most inappropriate ways that hurt is going to pop out and get you tonight if you can wrap your heart around this stuff then God is going to heal those places. Those places. Yep, we believe for physical healing. But tonight we're also looking for mental healings and spiritual healings. The Bible says that we need to be we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So tonight's a mind renewal, renewal time, you know. And the renewal is, you don't have to figure it out, but you can just let your heart grab it. And then your heart will tell your head what to do, not the other way around. But, yeah, with me? So, I'm going to ask Pastor to come up. And Sister Pastor, and however they do this thing with uh, healing on the Friday night, we want to take a little time to do that. Is this Saturday? <laughs> Friday night, Saturday night. Yeah. It all runs together when you're having fun. Sure. As long as the day ends in Y. Yeah, as long as yeah. oh, any day that ends in Y. Amen. Amen. Listen, man, Mike said something I think is really cool. So here's what we're going to do. Stand with me. John, where are you at? Come on. There's something that's on my heart, and he said something that was really strong. I felt like it was right on. Sometimes sometimes it feels like midnight, and it seems dark. Matter of fact, we were talking... Mike used to travel with a guy named Carmen. Some of you are familiar with Carmen's ministry. And one of the things we were talking about was just some of the things that transpired in, in the, in, that they would go together and just make people laugh and have such an amazing time. But one of Carmen's strongest songs that he ever sang was this. It said, it might seem like it's Friday night, but Sunday's on the way. And I got to tell you something. It may seem like a Friday night, even when he said that earlier about it being Friday. That, that song was that it, it dealt with the crucifixion because on Friday night the, the Lord was crucified and it seemed like such a such a, a an ominous time in the history of the world but Sunday was coming 
And it may seem to you like tonight, it might be a, a Friday night in your life. There might be a place where you're challenged with some things that are going on in your life. There's some challenges that are happening in the family. There's some challenges that are happening in your finances. Maybe there's some major challenges that are going on in your body. And you're saying like, man, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get through the night. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get through the weekend. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through. And you know what I'm going to tell you is I really believe that this is a special time for just prayer right now that we could just see the glory of God come. Because I'm going to tell you something. I found that there's been times in my life where I asked the Lord to remove this load from my back. And the Lord said, nope, I'm just going to give you a stronger back. Lord, lift this load. But the Lord didn't lift the load. He just made my back stronger. And I hope that makes sense to somebody tonight. Because either way, if he lifts the load, I get through. But maybe it's like the Apostle Paul who said it so well. Lord, remove this thorn from my flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. And how did Jesus respond to that? My grace is sufficient because in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. It may be that you need that, that strength from the Lord. You may need that place where God just touches your life and brings transformation to you. So I'm going to invite you. If there's a place in your life right now where you're saying, Lord, I need your help. Seems like a Friday night. Seems like there's some challenges that are going on in my life right now that I don't know how to respond to. Whether they're physical, financial, spiritual, mental, emotional, if there's a place where you need a touch from heaven, I'm going to invite you. Meet us here on this brown carpet right now. Would you do that? Just come on. Just come on and believe the Lord right now. That's a good moment. It's a good moment to just come and believe the Lord. Might not even be for you. Might be for a family member. Might be for somebody that God wants to touch. And, and, and it might be that, that the strength that you receive tonight will make the difference because they're watching. Because I remember over and over Mike was saying, they're watching, they're watching. And it may be that the strength that you receive tonight will make the difference because somebody else is watching you. I'm ready to believe God tonight. There's a place, man, we're just going to pray. We're going to believe God. We're going to believe the Lord. Man, I'm, I'm ready to just believe God all over the house tonight. I need some of you guys to come and help us to pray. Come and some of the mentoring students, some of the staff. Let's just believe the Lord together. Just come and meet us here, man. Let's just, let's get hands on these folks. Let's pray with them. Let's believe God for his touch. It might be that you need to dance at midnight. I think Mike's dancing. It's midnight for him. And he's just, you know what? There's something about that where the glory of God just touches your life. But I'm ready to believe the Lord tonight. Let's just pray one with another all over this place. We're just going to get hands on some folks. John, go ahead, bud. Keeper of the stars. Lord of time and space You know what your heart is telling you, huh? I will up. live my life Lifting up your name Lover of my heart God who came to save For the cross and the life you gave, wonderful, powerful. 